Good evening and welcome to the webinar about the Airbnb program for NGOs social impact experiences. As an exception, this entire webinar will be held in English, so our amazing guest today, which I will introduce in a second, will be able to engage with all of your questions and comments. I am still Ana Stamatescu, the NGO online coordinator, and I will moderate this online training. For those who don't know us yet, Asociația TechSoup is the biggest tech resource center for NGOs from Romania. The TechSoup program, our main program for NGOs, which you are all part of, is, a, is an instrument which offers you access to software, cloud services, and other technology resources. The program is offered in partnership with TechSoup Global and is present in 236 countries. Once registered and approved in the TechSoup Romania program, your NGO can access software and other cloud services from our partners. More than 3,000 Romanian NGOs are already registered and validated in the program. NGO Online is the only digital school for NGOs in Romania, first implemented by Asociația TechSoup in 2016, that consists of webinars, online and offline free learning activities. The program develops the capacity for NGOs, employees and volunteers to use online tools to efficiently manage projects, raise funds online and increase the reach of their NGOs. Before we introduce our guest today, our usual clarifications. This webinar is being recorded. For those who are attending their first webinar, a webinar is an online presentation during which you can ask questions as we go along in the special chat questions section. Any questions you will have during the presentation, please write them in English or Romanian as you feel more comfortable and we will address them shortly after. Your microphones are turned off so we don't have noises in the recording. For today's webinar, we have to thank our awesome guest, Holly Bland, Social Impact Experiences Manager for Europe, Middle East and Africa with Airbnb, the biggest home sharing platform of the world. Today, Holly will help us discover this great opportunity from Airbnb and how can, you, can your NGO benefit from the Airbnb program. Thank you, Holly, for helping us navigate this. And you can start right now. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I hope that you can see my screen. And we maybe if you could just give me a quick yes, if you can. Yes, we can see you and hear you all good. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, firstly, just wanted to say thank you to everybody for attending. I know it's your evening, so I hope I'm not keeping you from your dinner. Uh, hopefully this uh, presentation will be useful for you. Um, and as Anna said, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the chat box and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Um, so, uh, a quick little run through the agenda. So um, I'll do some introductions first. Um, we'll then move on to just talk about broadly what the Airbnb Experiences program is. We'll then dive a little bit deeper into social impact experiences themselves and then we'll leave plenty of time at the end uh, for any questions. So a quick hello from Airbnb. Um, that's me on the little square on the left there. Um, my name's Holly, I live in London and I look, um, look after the social impact program for Europe and that's me in Poland on holiday a few years ago. On the top right inside Side, we have my wonderful colleague Laura. She lives in San Francisco and had the pleasure of meeting Anna recently, which is how we've all been connected. And then on the bottom right hand corner, that's our manager Jasmine. He leads our team and he lives between San Francisco and Portland. Very lucky. Um, so, quickly before we dive into what Airbnb experiences are, I wanted to do a little poll question to see if everybody's already listening. Um, so Anna, if you're ready with the first question, I wondered how many of you have um, heard of Airbnb experiences before? And you can select the yes and no answers on your screen there. People started selecting, we'll just wait a few seconds so every, everyone can vote. <laughs> Oh, 50 50. That's great. And for the second question, have any of you taken an 
MV experience before. Just a few more seconds. Great, so we already have some people that have been a guest. Perfect. Uh, sometimes when I do that question, um, nobody knows what Airbnb is. So we're already off onto a great start, which is good news. Um, so what are Airbnb experiences? Um, experiences are essentially just activities, tours, um, workshops, classes, whatever it might be, um, that tourists and locals um, can take when they're visiting a new place or city. They're a way for local people to host um, guests from around the world. And the aim of them is that there are activities that allow people to see a city or a place or a new destination from a slightly different side. So when the founders of Airbnb were thinking about the next step after people started sharing their homes, they were thinking, OK, um, when people are traveling, they get to see where locals live, but not necessarily what they go and do. So where do they eat? Where do they explore at the weekend? What do they do after work? So Airbnb experiences are really a way for people to understand a little bit more about a city or a destination that's beyond just um, the lonely planet top 10 places to visit when they go to Bucharest or whatever it might be. Um, so they're a little bit um, unique. Um, they offer kind of a chance to peek behind the curtains um, and we'll go into a little bit more um, detail on some of the examples of what they are in a second. Um, we do have some standards of what we are and what we're not looking for in an Airbnb experience. So in terms of what we are looking for, um, every experience or activity um, is led by a host. So that is an individual that's knowledgeable and passionate about um, the activity that they're presenting. Um, they don't have to be a world class expert with a research degree or anything like that. It can just be somebody that's been I don't know, following Comic-Con conferences for the past 10 years and happens to start them. Um, the next section is um, that guests have a chance to participate. So they're not just listening to somebody talk, they actually have an opportunity to ask questions. They may be able to get hands-on and try a new activity or skill. So it could be making something or having a go in a kayak or whatever it might be. But something that keeps them actively engaged so that they are thinking about the thing that they're doing and not just feeling like they have to be there. Um, the next standard um, is that an experience gives guests access to a special place or community. Um, this doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, something as superb and out there as besides the, behind the scenes of a Harry Potter movie. It could just be um, access to a room, perhaps in a museum or access to a particular person or um, some kind of knowledge that a guest couldn't readily find on their own. So they couldn't learn about that topic by just Googling it on the internet. Um, but it's something that um, is particularly special and unique to a certain um, place. And then the last one goes back to the host again. And this is around um, the host having a unique perspective. So a lot of what we do with Airbnb experiences is about storytelling and telling the story of a place, a topic, um, a person. And so we love it when the host can bring their own flavor, their own sense of humor, um, their own understanding on a particular topic, whether that might be somebody's grandma's secret pasta recipe from hundreds of years ago that's, you know, only two people in their family know, um, or whether it's, you know, uh, experience of somebody as a young person growing up in apartheid South Africa or something along those lines. And then moving on to what we're not looking for in an experience. Um, so large and impersonal tours. So if you think about the big red hop on hop off bus, that's probably the opposite of what we're looking for. Um, an event or activity that doesn't have a person hosting. So really central to the experience is that person who's going to meet the guests, guide them through the activity from beginning to end, be there to answer questions and um, to facilitate conversation and um, and be a good host. Um, the third thing we're not looking for is a service, so things that are um, that tourists might need but aren't really that fun to do on holiday, so airport transportation or laundry or car hire or things like that. 
and then lastly get something that guests can easily easily find on their own so we're not experiences aren't just um buying a ticket to a museum for example they're a little bit they go a bit deeper than that um they're a way to kind of access that uh, unique and hidden knowledge and then uh, we've talked already a lot about the hosts um, who can host an Airbnb experience so we have lots of different kinds of hosts um, the main three groups include small businesses so this could be um, small cookery schools class, class um, uh, workshop groups it could be um, small tour operators um, and those kinds of organizations the middle group is new entrepreneurs so this could be somebody who is has decided to quit their job and pursue their passion for magic um, and is starting out by offering their experience on Airbnb and they're going to build their business that way and then the last um, group of hosts is who we're here to talk about today and that is community nonprofits like yourselves um, before we delve into uh, any more about um, experiences, I was digging around to, um, to find out some facts about experiences in Romania and I thought I would just share a couple of them with you. Uh, so we actually only launched experiences in Mar Romania about four weeks ago, um, back in April, and already we have 120 experiences. Uh, the most popular categories at the moment are food and drink um, and history and a lot of those experiences are in Bucharest and those are the categories we would expect for um, cities um, because we know that's what tourists and what locals like to do um, and then this fact that I found quite interesting is um, obviously sites like Airbnb rely on their reviews and already those 120 experiences have 9% five-star review rate. So that tells us that they're extremely high quality and that people are really enjoying going on them, which is great news for Romania. So bravo to the people already hosting there and hopefully we can convince uh, you guys to join them. Uh, so what about social impact experiences? That's what we're here to learn about after all. Uh, firstly, what is a social impact experience? Essentially, it's no different to what a regular experience is. So it's still fun and unique and different um, and kind of an inspiring thing for people to do while they're on holiday or to discover if they're living in a city. Um, but the twist is that social impact experiences are hosted by non-profit organisations which means that we waive our 20% service fee. So 100% of what a guest pays to take an activity goes directly to the cause. Um, and that's all automatically done through the platform. There's no booking fee. There's no um, sign up fee for an organization to take part. It's a completely free platform um, that's aimed at um, helping organizations to generate sustainable income. Um, I just wanted to play a small video here. This is um, one of our organisations that we've been working with in London, it's the Guide Dogs for the Blind Association um, and their experience is wonderful. They're based just outside of London. You get to go to the training centre, you get to meet all the dogs, um, learn about how they train people and um, what it's like living with a visual impairment. Um, and I'll let them explain because they explain it in better words, but it's a wonderful way to spend an afternoon, I can assure you that. seeing people's reactions when they meet the dogs. They know how to wiggle their way around your heart. Guide Dogs is a charity that's been around in the UK since 1931. Currently there's two million people in the UK living with sight loss, so our work is more vital than ever. The social impact experience for Guide Dogs and Airbnb has allowed us to raise awareness of the work that we do. We've got fantastic dogs, but there is a human being at the end of the lead, so it gives us a chance to put people in those shoes and educate them about the training, how important it is. We have a tour of kennels, they breed the dogs, it's a free running area, it's a really great way to come in, to ask us loads of questions, to cuddle the dogs, play with them. We came across this and I thought that this is something I can impress so There's more than uniqueness for the experience, but I also know the proceeds were going to support their organisation. It costs around £55,000 from birth to retirement for each of the dogs. We rely on the generosity and donations of individuals, so by raising funds and awareness it helps us continue our life-changing work. I definitely think that people have realised how much guide dogs are actually worth. It really gives us the opportunity to bring people out to the small corner of London um, 
and show the work that we're, we're doing out here. It's worth a treat, right? <laughs> Well, so that was just um, a little example of um, the types of activities that you can host. Um, I think the really wonderful thing about the guide dogs example is that right at the very end, um, what they actually do is um, ask their guests to put on um, masks that um, have varying levels of visual impairment, varying levels of blindness. And then the guests are guided around an obstacle course by the dogs. Um, and it's really emotional and kind of transformative way to get people to understand the work that they're doing. And I think it definitely leads a lasting impression on the guests. Um, so we've heard in their reviews. Um, oh, sorry, bear with me. Great. Sorry, slight technical difficulty. <laughs> So what are some of the benefits of hosting an Airbnb experience? Well, first is that it's an amazing opportunity to raise awareness with um, a community that you might not be already talking to. So there are millions of people browsing Airbnb every day. Um, they're quite a millennial audience. Um, they're usually quite young, quite switched on about the world's issues. Um, and uh, they're extremely engaged and adventurous when they travel. So it's a great way for you to um, talk to a network of people who you're not already talking to um, and so far since we launched the program in 2017 we've had um, just over 90,000 people take a social impact experience um, so we're very excited by that number and um, we're doing a lot of work to make sure there's many more people being connected to causes. The second benefit is around um, creating lasting impact um, so we have just over 600 um, organisations hosting social impact experiences at the moment and we're starting to hear some really wonderful stories about um, people who've gone on to be ongoing donors, supporters and champions of their work. I'll talk a little bit about some of those examples in a second. Um, but it's a really great way to ensure that whatever the mission of your organisation is, that message is being spread around the world. And then lastly, it's a good opportunity to generate regular income for your charity. So if you are looking for new ways to fundraise or to have people fundraise on your behalf, hosting an experience is a great way to do this. So between the 600 organisations who host an experience, so far they've generated just over $5 million, um, which is a pretty impressive number. And we're thrilled that that amount of money is going towards the nonprofit sector. Um, and obviously it's completely flexible and up to you how often you would want to host an experience um, but it, if you have an experience that you're hosting on a regular basis it's a great way to keep that money coming in. I thought I'd just include a couple of um, host stories on here for you so you can start to understand the sorts of things that people are um, discovering through Airbnb experiences. The first one um, is from John Monsoon who hosts um, an experience in South Africa called Paddle with Penguins. Um, basically John and his friend Terry are conservationists and they've been running a charity in the Penguin Beach area of South Africa for years. Um, for this kind of uh, platform for them has allowed them to um, really take their message about wildlife conversation, conservation to a global level. And he said to us that the best thing about it is that the type of people that are coming on their Airbnb um, experiences are energetic, they're informed, they want to know more about conservation um, and they love that kind of hands-on opportunity to be able to do it. Um, John's one of the great people for stories but he's also been telling me that months afterwards when people have taken his experience they'll get back in touch to say I'm now in Thailand and I'm looking for a way to do an ethical elephant tour. How can I make sure that my behavior um, is going to be beneficial to the animals? Um, he's also had um, people join his experience who've then gone on to volunteer. Uh, he had a graphic designer offer to um, revamp their website for them, which was amazing. And at the moment, they have um, an engineer who came on their experience helping them to build an app so that they can track penguin migration. Uh, during the winter season, which is very cool. Um, the second host um, is Thomas, who is the CEO of um, an organisation called Child.org. They're an international development charity and deliver most of their projects in Africa, but they actually host experiences across the UK. They have around 11 experiences now, 
and they're all walking tours along different themes. Um, two of their most popular tours are Harry Potter focused, um, and the one that's in the picture here is a feminist history walking tour of London. Um, and the reason I chose Thomas's quote is because he told me that the way they think about it is that people only have a certain amount of money that they are willing to donate to good causes but they actually are willing to spend much, much more on entertainment. So for them, they see the opportunity of bringing more um, revenue to their organization through that entertainment stream, rather than promoting it as a donation. Um, so they're really going big and um, being putting as much energy as they can into this. Um, for their 11 experiences, they've actually doubled the um, income for their charity. Um, this is now one of their big fund, biggest fundraising streams, which is really great. Um, one of the things you can start to think about um, as you're thinking about what sorts of activities your organisation could host is to think about a few different themes. Um, and these can really be anything. It can be about telling a story. It can be about getting people out into nature. Um, it really depends. Um, but we just have a couple of examples here to share with you. Um, the first one, the first theme is about connecting with locals. And this experience is in Copenhagen and it's hosted by an organization called Cycling Without Age. You may already know of them. I believe they have charities, um, chapters all over the world. And essentially, um, this organization is focused on two things with their experience. One is um, to show people around the city of on Copenhagen on one of their iconic cargo bikes. And the other one is to tackle loneliness. So um, Ole, who's in the front there, the elderly gentleman, he's actually one of the beneficiaries of the charity and he comes along on these bike rides, chats to the tourists while he's sitting in the bike, tells them his stories, his unique stories um, from living in Copenhagen and growing up in Copenhagen. And it's a chance for him to meet new people, to get them out of the house, um, and then obviously a great opportunity for the organisation to receive more funding to do more activities as well. The second theme you can think about is encouraging people to get hands on with your cause. Um, the example we have here is hosted by Plastic Whale, it's in Amsterdam, and uh, their experience I actually just did last week, it's fantastic. Um, you go along the canals in Amsterdam and you scoop plastic out of the canal, and while you're going along they tell you a little bit about the history of the canals and some of the famous buildings alongside the canal. And they also tell you about the importance of the work that they do about healthy oceans, about reducing um, plastic and living a plastic free lifestyle. One of the really touching things about this experience is a few months ago, I saw a review from a lady who said, never, ever, ever did I think I would spend $40 to pick rubbish out of a canal, but I would pay to do this over and over and over again. So I think that um, really kind of talks to the emotional connection that they have made with people whilst they're on this experience. The third area to think about is providing insider access. So when I was talking earlier about um, some of our standards being around activities that people can't find anywhere else, um, this one is a really great example of that. So this is another experience in South Africa. Um, it benefits the Nelson Mandela Foundation and it's hosted by a chap called Jack who was Nelson Mandela's prison, prison water and what you do is you go and spend the day on Robben Island, Jack will tell you about the history of apartheid in South Africa, he tells you about the significance of Robben Island, of how Nelson Mandela spent his time there and really gives you a much much more personal insight into the strife and struggles that Nelson Mandela went through um, and who better than Jack to be able to tell you that he is the guy that spent many years working alongside uh, Nelson Mandela whilst he was um, in Robben Island. Um, this has been a really great experience for a lot of people who are visiting Cape Town um, to rediscover their roots and to learn about their family history. Um, and so if you're ever feeling nosy, you can have a look at their reviews. They have some really interesting stories on there. This next one um, is about sharing your skills and it can either be the skills of your organization if you're kind of a craft or hands-on focused organization or it can be about looking into your volunteer network and seeing who has a unique skill that they can share that could become an experience supporting your organization um, so this experience is actually just cookie decorating it's hosted by becca she's a volunteer for family house in san francisco and they're an interesting example because they're actually a cancer charity and quite often in my job when i speak to new organizations they say with this kind of charity, with that kind of charity, people don't want to learn about us when they go on holiday. 
And what Becca does instead is she hosts this cookie making and decorating session in a family house centre in a recreational room. Um, and she uses it as an opportunity to get people decorating these lovely cookies that look like the Golden Gate Bridge. But she also tells them about the centre, about the work that the charity is doing there. Uh, and she also runs classes with some of the patients that are staying at the centre. So she can also talk about the therapeutic benefits um, of the programmes that they run um, on um, patient well-being and recovery times. So it's a really nice way to get people engaging on something fun like a cookie, but actually telling a more serious um, story at the same time. And then this last one is one of my favourite experiences. This is um, in LA and it benefits Free Animal Doctor. And this category we call Iconic with a Twist. And this is really thinking about what are the activities in my city or my town or wherever you are um, that are the really iconic things that people come there to do. So in London, they might come to see Big Ben and the Buckingham Palace. In LA, lots of people want to go and see the Hollywood sign. So this experience is essentially a walk up to the Hollywood sign. Free animal doctor um, have a lot of rescue animals, especially dogs at their shelter. They need to socialize the dogs anyway and get them some exercise. So they bring the dogs along on the walk. Guests get to meet the dogs, have a lovely walk. Um, and that is it. That's the simplicity of it. Um, this is one of our most popular experiences. And I think because of the combination of cute furry dogs um, and also because of how iconic it is. Um, and so not only have they raised a lot of money for their organisation, they've also had 11 dogs adopted, uh, which is a great story. Um, and they encourage all of their visitors to share the pictures that they take on their social media channels, tagging them, tagging Airbnb experiences. And they've gained a lot, a kind of a big following of people on social media from that. And they tell the stories of the dogs that you walk. They tell you when your dog gets adopted, when it finds its way for home. Um, so it's a really, really lovely experience of capturing fundraising, but also raising awareness and then also hitting the um, rehousing goals for the dogs as well. So a quick polling question to check whether you guys were listening. Um, Anna, if you're ready on the poll, um, how many dogs were adopted from the hike to the Hollywood sign experience? few more seconds to see how many of you have paid attention. <laughs> you can also just guess. Thank you. Oh, lots of you were listening. That's brilliant. <laughs> I didn't expect quite so many of you to have got that right, but that's wonderful. Great. So moving on, one of the key things to think about when you're thinking up what kind of experience, who might host your experience, is think about what makes your organization really unique and what are the secrets and resources that you already have that you can use to build an experience. There's the dog picture again, which shows how much I do love this dog experience. Um, so the first thing to think about is, what kind of activity might connect someone with your cause on an emotional level? So what was it that made you fall in love with your organisation? Um, was it their message? Was it how they deliver it? Was it the brand? Um, which of those things can you use to start building your experience around? The second is around thinking about what resources you already have available. So is that somebody in your team that has a specific skill? Are they secretly a photographer? Do they know calligraphy? Um, do you have access to a particular venue that you could use to host your experience? Um, one of the things to think about around venues as well is also um, on um, which partners you have. So do you have any partners that could offer you a space that could host an experience in? You can also think about what event programming you're already running. So if you're already running similar kinds of events and activities, can you open them up to the Airbnb community as a way to boost the number of people that are attending those? And the third one is thinking about what particular expertise do you have? So like the conservation um, example, can you talk to people about a specific topic um, and make that the central focus of your experience? And then the last one is, who are your volunteers? Do you already have some amazingly skilled volunteers um, who could host an experience on your behalf? Um, you can also promote this as an opportunity um, for volunteers who are maybe tired 
tired of volunteering the way that they currently do or they want something fresh or new to work on um, I also hear as well that it's a great opportunity for volunteers to meet new people and quite a lot of the people that host experiences have now got places to stay all around the world thanks to the guests that have come on their experiences and then the last question is when you have people coming to visit you and to stay with you, your family, your friends, what do you want to show them that's in your town or your city? Um, so I know that I'm forever showing people all the different little parks that are in London or the green spaces, the food markets that the tourists don't know about, that kind of thing. And that can help you start to put an experience just around the places that you like to go um, and that you like to show people. And really when thinking about an experience, you should think of it as um, kind of an extension of your brand um, and ongoing part of your programming. So it's an opportunity for you to showcase the work that you do uh, to uh, visitors that are coming from all around the globe. And so as part of that, you might want to think of, think of it as how you can make it as exceptional. And when people go back to wherever they're visiting from, when they look back on the holiday to Romania, think, do you know what the highlight of that holiday was when I went? on a dog walk with this organization or whatever it might be. Uh, so we've already talked a lot about the host, just a few more tips of who you can think of. Um, it, there are kind of three groups, but really anybody can be a host for your experience. The first one is to think of um, if you already have staff members who can host your experience. So um, this could be a great opportunity um, for people to run as a project. It's quite often a nice project to give to an intern um, or other staff members who are looking for a way to diversify their skills. Um, there's obviously a lot of different skills that are needed. So good communication, marketing, uh, creativity, innovation, all of those kinds of things. It's quite a good project for somebody in that, in that sense. The second one is who is your in your immediate community of supporters? Do you have um, people who are local to your organizations that are actors, artists, um, beneficiaries of your organizations or other locals who might be willing to support your organization in this way? And then the last one, um, as I was mentioning earlier, is um, could you have a volunteer or a fundraiser um, who could take this on as a project and uh, run it on your behalf? So if you're ready to get started and you already have ideas flowing, um, it's quite easy to set up your experience. Um, we actually have a demonstration video that I'm not going to show you now um, because it's around 10 minutes long, but it takes you through each step of the um, experience um, setup and we can send it out afterwards. Um, but there are three main um, stages of setting up your experience. The first one is who is going to be your host. Once you've found that person, it's pretty straightforward from then on. The second one is creating a new Airbnb account for your nonprofit. Um, it's a lot easier to set up a new account rather than to use your personal account. Um, if you are going to host an experience, um, it just gets a bit complicated. So we recommend that you set up a new Airbnb account. And then once you've done that, the third step is to build your experience. Um, so it's a really straightforward form. It just asks you for the who, the what, the where and the when of your experience. You can upload any pictures that you'd like um, and any notes. Um, and then on the actual experience page, there's a section for you to fill in that talks about your organization and what the money from the experience will benefit. So that's a great place to put details of any specific projects that you have in mind. Any money that you generate through an Airbnb experience is unrestricted. So you can spend it on whatever you need to, if that's staffing costs or projects or new equipment or whatever it might be, it's totally up to you what you spend it on. And once that form is complete, um, it comes over for us to check through, make sure everything is OK. And then it usually goes live within about seven days of you completing the form. Uh, so from beginning to end, it should take you about an hour to create your account and then to fill in all of the experience details. Now, a quick polling question before we move on to the Q&A. I'd love to know if any of you have thought of a new idea whilst you've been listening to this that could make a great experience for your organisation. The results will be up in, in a few seconds. Thank you. Wow, that's an amazing number. Sometimes when I ask that question, if I'm doing this webinar as an event in person, there's silence in the room and that makes me worry that either nobody's listened or they didn't like anything I said. So really pleased to hear that there are already a lot of ideas out there. 
Um, great, so that's pretty much everything I have to say. Um, we can share out all of these materials after the webinar, um, but I'm very, very happy to take any questions that you might have now. I'll hand it over to you, Anna, in case there's already some in the chat. Yes, uh, we have a first question that starts like this. Hello, Holly. Thank you for being here today and for the amazing and insightful webinar. I was wondering if in order to be eligible as an NGO applying in this program, can the experience be used as a fundraising tool, such as a wildlife NGO hosting a tour in Bucharest? Or is it supposed to relate 100% to the cause as the dogs for the blind and most of the examples you have given? Thank you. That is a great question. Um, and the answer is, it can be both. So when I talk about social impact experiences, I also always say there are two kinds. One is the kind where it's really immersive and connected to the cause. And the other is when it's just a fundraising activity that happens to benefit your organization. So we have a lot of social impact concerts, for example, they're not hosted. One is actually hosted by a wildlife charity, but they just have a great space by a reservoir. They host a concert there and the money goes to their organization. So no, you don't have to link it to your cause, um, but it is nice to be able to tell people about the work that you're doing whilst they're on your experience. We'll wait a few more seconds so they can write their mm -hmm. questions. Someone asks, um, he also starts, hi Holly, great webinar. We are in rural Romania. Can we also offer accommodation? So um, for most of our experiences, they don't include accommodation. So they're usually just uh, one day experiences that um, are between two and six hours long. But in, I think next month, we'll be launching Airbnb Adventures and they are more kind of the package activity. So they will be experiences and accommodation together and they're absolutely perfect for rural destinations. So I'll keep an eye out for that announcement if you do want to offer more of an adventure style experience. Um, and those are very much focused around nature, about taking people off the grid, um, reconnecting with wildlife or going trekking or whatever it might be. Um, but those are the ones that will include, include accommodation and activities. Thank you. The next question is, um, the account has to be for a registered NGO or can it be as well for an informal group? To be valid for the social impact program to have your um, fees waived by Airbnb, then it needs to be um, a registered NGO. Um, but you can absolutely still host an experience for a, an informal group. But unfortunately, if you're not registered we, with TechSoup, we won't be able to um, offer you to have fees waived. Thank you. If you have several experiences by your NGO, can you link them to a single NGO account? Yes, you can. So you can have one account and you can have up to 40 experiences on that account. So you can have quite a lot. Thank you. Can you give us an example of the price range worldwide and in Bucharest for experiences offered by NGOs? Yeah. So um, you're also very welcome to check this out um, on the Airbnb platform. So you can really easily see what other people are charging, uh, depending on the type of activity you want to host. But I'd say generally um, experiences are around 50 euros or less, um, especially if they're just sort of two to four hour experiences. Um, and the reason they're kind of around that price is because we estimate that people have around 75 euros a day to spend when they're trying so that's it include their food and activities for the day um, so most experiences tend to be around 50 euros or less than that and then we do also have experiences that are kind of a couple of hundred pounds but those are the ones that are really really exclusive so it might be you know we've got one that's like make your own sword with an archaeological society, for example, um, or something that's kind of a bit higher end or uh, more luxurious um, or includes a lot of different things. So we have an experience um, where you go into um, the design studio of a lovely man called Matt, who um, he's a high end fashion designer for like Prada and Gucci and these kinds of names. 
He takes you um, to weave your own silk scarf. You're there for six hours. You also have lunch and that one's about 120 euros. So there's a bit of a range depending on what it might be. Um, but having a look on the website and having a little browse around what's already in Bucharest, you'll be able to kind of see what sort of prices people are charging for walking tours or food and drink experience and then kind of set your price accordingly. Um, sometimes I get asked whether people, uh, whether social impact experiences should be cheaper because they're for charities and I absolutely don't think so. I think if you want to use it as a fundraising experience, definitely make sure that you're priced competitively. And sometimes when I speak to organisations as well, they ask if they can offer their experience for free. We don't actually have that um, built into the product at the moment. Um, so, and one of those reasons is because we find when someone has paid to take an experience, they're much more likely to turn up and go on the experience rather than drop out. And the other reason um, is because sometimes when um, experiences are listed for a very low price on our, our platform, people don't believe that they're true or um, they think they might be really poor quality because they're so cheap. So I definitely take a look around what's offered already and kind of think of your price in comparison to that. Thank you. How does the money transfer occur between the guest Airbnb and the organization? What are the options available? Sure. So um, when a guest books, they will um, pay through Airbnb. Airbnb holds on to that money. Um, and as a nonprofit, you can upload the bank account details of your nonprofit straight into Airbnb. And then within 24 hours of the experience taking place, the money is paid instantly over to you. Um, so you don't have to invoice Airbnb or wait for a monthly or quarterly payment. It's all done each time your experience takes place. And actually in the back end of your account, you can download the financial report. So you can see line by line, every transaction that's been made over to your organization and the date that it was made and the amount. Um, so if your finance teams or anybody else needs to see that, then it's there and easy to access. Is there any age limit for the host if the host is a person? Yeah, so the host must be um, 18 years or above. And then in terms of the guests, you can actually choose the minimum age for a guest yourself. Um, it can be anywhere from two years upwards. And then it's up to you if you want to decide to let people to bring babies along to your experience. Obviously, if it's wine tasting or something like that, you might not want to have children around. <laughs> but otherwise, um, you can choose the age of the people that want to come. But the hosts themselves must be over 18. Thank you. Someone says, what a great presentation and fantastic news for, from Airbnb. Congrats, Holly and the team. Uh, is the event, are the events really limited to 10 guests per event? They are. And the reason that we keep the group sizes so small, um, there's a couple of reasons for it. One um, is because um, one of our missions with experiences is about human connection. So it's about making sure that if people are coming on those experiences, they're chatting to each other, they get enough time to talk to the host um, and everybody feels included and, you know, so nobody's sort of left behind or anything like that. Um, the second reason is that we're really focused on high quality experiences and we've experimented with the group and we find that even moving up to 15 or 20 people, you start to see that the quality of them drops quite a lot. Um, so that's why we keep them really small. If you're planning to host something like a concert or a comedy night or something like that, then we can increase the capacity to a maximum of 70. Um, but we usually do that on an individual basis when we hear more about kind of what you're actually planning to do. For most of our experiences, it's 10 to 12 guests per group. Thank you. In the countries you apply this program, since in Romania it has been just launched, what do you usually do in order to raise awareness of it? Is it only the responsibility of the marketing of the NGO or does Airbnb support it as well? No, we also promote it as well. So we'll do lots of campaigns across social media um, towards a big external audience. And then um, for people who are already using Airbnb, um, if they have um, booked an Airbnb to stay in, as soon as they book, they'll see a page confirming their booking and then telling them about things to do in the local area. And that's where we'll advertise experiences to them. And then about six weeks and three weeks before their experience, uh, their stay in that place they'll receive another email about experiences 
And then when they arrive in the city that they're going to, they'll also receive a push notification in the app that will tell them about the experiences that are available near to them. Um, so we have a few different ways that we're marketing them. Um, and we also do a lot of work um, on Instagram, which is not a platform that I use myself. Um, I'm not cool enough, uh, but we do a lot of marketing on Instagram um, and we have a lot of people using hashtag Airbnb experiences and we encourage people to share their pictures um, on social media and to share the experience that they've taken on social media as well. So when you leave a review for the experience, you can click the share button so they can share it with their family and friends and their network as well. Can the activities take place at a volunteer's slash employee's home, for example, a, a workshop, or does it have to take place in a public space? Nope, it can absolutely take place in somebody's home. Um, in fact, I would say most of our experiences probably do take place in people's homes, um, and that's absolutely fine. The only caveat with that is if it's a food and drink experience, um, you may need to check with your local kind of council or government unit around um, whether you need to have a license. Uh, more often than not, you just need to notify them that you're hosting a food and drink experience, um, but otherwise you can go ahead and host them in your homes. Thank you. Are the guests allowed to donate additional sums to the NGO? That is a very good question. So um, at the moment, we don't have that technology built into the platform it's something that we're working on so that when people leave a review for your experience they also have the option to leave a donation like they would say a tip or something like that uh, but if you want to um, on the day of your experience ask people to sign up to a mailing list or to make a donation um, via your website or anything like that then you can absolutely give them that information while they're on the experience with you Thank you. Can we include things that use the guests' skills, like have them teaching English to children or helping build a house in the community, etc.? Yeah, so we don't have at the moment too many experiences that are kind of volunteer focused, um, but it is something that we're starting to look at a little bit more. So like with the um, plastic whale experience, and um, that's essentially just a volunteering experience where you're on the canal and scooping plastic out of the river. We have quite a few that are um, like beach cleaning experiences or um, I'm trying to think what else it might be now. Um, we have a few that are language focused, but they're more language exchange meetups so they're quite informal and people come to practice their English um, with um, travellers and actually that's a great way for people to meet the locals as well um, so yeah that kind of volunteer experience could work and um, we just don't have that many of them at the moment. Thank you. Does Airbnb provide a toolbox of recommendations for organizing your first events with useful steps to the extent that you need to take into account different steps than you would with a regular event you would organize? Yes, absolutely. Um, we can uh, share some of those materials with you um, after the webinar, um, but we also have um, a huge online resource center that's got all kinds of different articles and tips on there so um, I believe before your first you host your first experience you'll receive an automatic email with all those tips of things to consider um, but those resources are always available online and we've got things like how to attract bookings how to make sure you get five star reviews um, tips about kind of how to communicate with your host beforehand how to make your um, experience page or instructions really clear that sort of thing so uh, we have lots of tools available to support you Thank you. Um, from a fiscal point of view, are the revenues sent from Airbnbs as donations or as revenues? They're sent as revenues, um, and I think that the tax implications on that vary by country. Um, I know that in the UK that means that because they're sent as revenue, they are um, taxable. Um, but I wouldn't be able to say specifically for Romania, I'm not sure, uh, but they're sent to you as revenue either way. Okay, thank you, uh, Holly. I think we will uh, close the, the question floor now. If any questions remain uh, unanswered, we will get back to you and answer them, but for now we are okay. Thank you a lot, Holly. I think this is, uh, we will end now.
with the questions. So uh, thank, thank, you. thank you everybody for asking questions as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you all for your time, especially Holly and uh, the things we learned today. Um, for all of you who participated, uh, we will get back to you in the following days with Holly's presentation and additional resources. Now I will end the webinar so that you will be able to see our feedback survey, which will appear right away. Don't close anything, just wait for the survey to appear. Thank you and bye.